Capablanca's approach in this position was slightly different. He always played knight bd7, and after rook c1, c6, in case of bishop d3, took on c4, bishop takes c4, knight d5, and exchanging the bishops. And the idea was after castle to take on c3, rook c3, and play e5. So, as you can see, it's, it's the same idea of solving the problems bishop c8, and uh, white tried hard different lines here, bishop, bishop b3, queen c2, uh, um, and also white tried taking on e5, knight takes e5, exchange on e5, f4, it's very aggressive, but after queen e4, the, oh, the, the deep analysis and practice showed no advantage, no real advantage for white. They even tried to sacrifice pawn on e3 after bishop d3, but with no success. So uh, eventually it was recognized that Kauplanka's defense in its classical form um, offers very little hope for white to gain solid initiative. And um, white always tried for, for, for deviation. And uh, Alokin, in fact, in his match against Kauplanka, always played knight e4. Uh, so that's an idea to keep more pieces aboard and still, you know, uh, pretending that black's problems with bishop on c8 cannot be resolved immediately. Kaoplanka played knight 5 f6, knight g3, and uh, then he decided to, to, to change the queens. So this position happened many times in the match, Elohim Kaoplanka. So it seems a little bit dull isn't it? But there were many games that had, uh, they were lively and there was so much in exciting content that was unfortunately disregarded for many many years because people believed that Queen's Gambit was not worth of, of their attention. Just to show you one game to demonstrate how much fight was inserted by these two great minds into such a dull quote-unquote position. So in game 20, I think with game 20, Elohim played here Bishop d3. Why he played bishop d3 here? Obviously, he doesn't want Kaoplanka to play b6 and solve the problem with uh, uh, bishop uh, coming on b7. So uh, it seems that black has a very passive position because if white, you know, bring all the rook on d1, king goes on e2, then e4, then black is black is in deep trouble. So Kaoplanka, of course, played e5, and after d5, knight g4. So we're trying to, to capitalize immediately uh, on the uh, on the um, position of white's king on uh, d2 and black's rook on d8. Uh, Alokin's planet playing e6. So now if black takes on e6, then after king e2, it has very bad position because pawn structure is compromised and uh, white piece white knight has a very good square on e, uh, square on e4, uh, for instance. Yeah, and black black still has to develop its pieces from from uh, uh, the queen side, bishop and and a rook. Potentially, by the way, if you know with some exchanges, e5 square could be also occupied by white knights. So, Capablanca had something else in mind, and after e6, he played knight d7 e5. Now e takes f7, king takes f7, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, rook c3. For a moment, it seems that just black. Black attack is out of steam because it's it's over. It's just one extra pawn for white, and there's very little black can do about it. But Kavalanga plan b5 here, and suddenly white is under tremendous pressure because the bishop is pinned, and this is a threat b4. And unless something is done, then the the, the bishop will be will will be um, simply lost. If you play b4, then after a5, the white position is broken. So uh, a3 doesn't help because then, for instance, black could play b4, a4, bishop a6, just winning the piece. So uh, what what else? What can be done? So um, Alokin found a, a brilliant uh, uh, chance. He played f4, and after b4, he even sacrificed an exchange. b6, king takes c3. So there's a very complicated position. There are two knight and two pawns for a rook, uh, but there's a lot of tension. Kaplanka moved his king in the center, taking this pawn on, pawn on uh, e5. And after knight e2, king e5, knight d4. So as you see, knight comes to the center, attacking c this pawn. 
uh, he played bishop b7 and then looking to con h7 c5 knight f3 check and with a lot of complication that followed um, this very tense opening uh, the game drawn in fact Kalblank at one point at move 40 made it made a big mistake and looking didn't capitalize on it uh, where he could win another pawn and having good ch good winning chances but this segment shows you how much fight could uh, uh, could be discovered and rediscovered in in the positions that look dull by our modern standards for the for the eyes that used to look at Greenfield defense or King's Indian or Benoni or other complications in Iran this classical King King's Gambit offered very little entertainment in fact it was the contrary just study the, the, the games of the greatest geniuses and look again at the match in 1927 Alekhin Kaoplanka, Buenos Aires 1927 um, now that was Alekhin's ways to deviate, knight e4 and he always stuck to that and he won number of brilliant games and one of the brilliant games we'll look, at, we'll look afterwards uh, it's the game he beat Emmanuel Oscar in 1934 uh, in international tournament in, 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 in Zurich uh, but White were probably not satisfied with this line and they looked for some other options and in this position after rook c1 c6 or even you know the positions before beforehand after knight bd7 White tried to do what is called fighting for tempo so because Black's idea is just to take on c4 eventually it has to take on c4 why not to find another useful move and of course white played here an a3 white played here uh, a queen c2 uh, always trying to keep a little bit of pressure and waiting for black to take on c4 uh, after for instance after queen c2 a6 there were even games looking at a4 here in this position and there were some great games so there would there were a number of, of very you know little details for us, they, they seem relevant because we have a choice of moving from one opening to another opening. We play Nimtsu Indian, and we play Benoni, we play Volga Gambit, we play uh, um, Kings Indian. While at that time, the players, they had this very little, little loan to, uh, uh, to walk around and to show their great abilities. So that's why they treasured every detail, every inch, you know, of the progress that they could make. And uh, you could find the games when after DC4, Bishop C4, Knight D5, I guess it's like in Rubinstein that he used the idea of playing bishop f4. Sounds ridiculous, you know, because white is bringing bishop back, actually giving up the bishop for knight, uh, compromising his pawn structure. But, you know, in, in, it's in these positions, whether it's, it's exactly this position or it could be different, uh, white is still entertaining the main idea of the uh, queen's gambit uh, uh, decline. Black's bishop on c8 is still there, and without Black's solving this problem, he cannot develop other pieces uh, uh, um, conveniently and having a nice game. So, uh, this little problem, as we see it now, of bishop c8 created so many details, so many uh, little tricks that were employed by both sides trying to gain an advantage on this limited available available space uh, of course either after a3 or queen c2 black can always play knight e4 sort of mixing the ideas of Lasker's defense and Kaplanka's defense trying to exchange the bishops and then eventually preparing you know knight takes c3 and then either dc4 and e5 or b6 and bishop b7 so uh, remember that black can always return to this to this uh, to this line but also, also, black tried here to play a6, uh, to play, uh, to play, uh, to use the ideas with a6, or what is called uh, the um, uh, upgraded fianchetto that was entertained in some games by Alexander Lohin by taking on c4 and playing b5, um, uh, and then just keep playing bishop b7. In fact, you know, just to, 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 to be, to be, to be on, the, on the safe side, I look at always try to play h6 first. h6 first, uh, and then after bishop f4, he moved to this position because it's always important to keep, to keep the pawn uh, out of h7 where it could be attacked. When, for instance, when bishop comes on, comes on d3, uh, uh, 
Then after Queen C2, this pawn can be attacked. And uh, um, well, the, in, in our collection of the games, we show you some of the examples where you know this weakness uh, uh, was used by White. And one of the games that um, could be quoted is um, Rubinstein Kaplanka uh, played in Saint Petersburg in 1914. So Alochin entertained this this line as I said as H6. Uh, 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 d c4 bishop c4 b5 and then developing the bishop so bishop d3 playing a6 so preparing c5 and uh, he had some decent results but eventually uh, the line with a4 was uh, was introduced uh, and uh, one of the games where it was played and gained popularity was Fischer's Pesky in a match uh, in 1972 